Hello, Calc Kids. Welcome back to another lesson in calculus. This is Mr. Bean, and we're down to our second to last lesson. Woo, I'm excited. Today's lesson is going to be focused on how to find a Taylor series or a Maclaurin series. Now, a Taylor series is similar to a polynomial series. We've done this before. So if you'll notice this, is hopefully you're starting to write this down. You've got this big, long thing here, and it is very similar to what we've done before. You have f of c plus f prime of c times x minus c and so forth. It follows the same pattern as a Taylor polynomial. What the series does if when you add all of these terms together, that series actually equals the function for many common functions that we work with. That summation, the series here, actually is the function, which is kind of cool. Now, typically, we're going to work with a Maclaurin series. So you're just going to have the centered at c equals 0, and you won't have to worry about this minus c part in all these, and we'll just say the c is a 0. For most of the stuff that we'll be doing, it'll be like that. But I wanted to put the Taylor series part here just so you knew that one, and then the Maclaurin is easier. So what we're going to do today is you're going to learn the following series, these four. We're going to get these figured out. What is the what is the Taylor series for these four, specifically the Maclaurin series, actually? We're going to do the Maclaurin series for these four things, and then you got to get it memorized. Because if we know these four, you're going to be able to work with them and manipulate the Taylor series based on what the Taylor series is of these. Okay, that was confusing. <laughs> I just talked in circles. You'll see what I mean here when I get to the examples. So get this written down if you don't, and let's get into figuring out what is the Maclaurin series for this first one, e to the x. So again, if you, do, if you don't have it memorized, you could do this the long way, which I'm going to do for this first one. But that just takes a while, so it's a lot better if you're going to be able to memorize these. So let me show you this. So f of x uh, is going to be, if we centered at 0, it's going to be this thing. And then it continues on. See, I have this plus dot, dot, dot. So hopefully this is familiar. We've done this before. So here's how we set up the Taylor series. In this case, it's a Maclaurin series because it's centered at x equals or at c equals 0. Now, the function that we're working with is e to the x. So let's go ahead and write out e to the x is going to equal. Now, the, the f prime on all of these, f prime, second derivative, third derivative, that's all going to be e to the x. So those will all be the same answer. And we know that e to the 0, well, that equals 1. So every single one of these f prime of 0, f double prime of 0, those are all 1. So that makes this really easy. So what happens here? This is going to be this thing here. And it continues on and on and on until you get to. Now, we could write a pa uh, the pattern of this is just until we get to x to the nth power over n factorial. And what we're doing is we're going to end up having, if we want to have a summation notation of this, we're going to just say this is the sum as n starts at 0 and goes off to infinity of this nth term. So we say of x to the n over n factorial. This is what you are going to memorize. This line and this line. These two things. You want to have that memorized. Now I've got a chart here later in the notes where we're going to organize all of this so you can have it all in one place where you look for your notes. Uh, and then if we did a ratio test and we using the ratio test we could figure out the interval of convergence and that interval of convergence would be from negative infinity to infinity for this thing. All right, so that is the Maclaurin series for e to the x. And we memorize that because we're going to use it to figure out other problems. And if you have it memorized, then it's really easy. If you have to do this the longhand every single time, it's going to take you a while. Uh, OK, so uh, I'll come back to this and talk about this in a little bit. Let's now figure out what about sine x? What is that one going to be? So I'm going to write out again. Uh, oh, wait, to do this one, we need to write a list real quick. What is f equal? f is sine. The derivative of f is cosine. Second derivative of f is negative sine. Third derivative, negative cosine. And then if we took the derivative of that and got the fourth derivative, we'd be back to sine. And so it repeats this, this uh, order over and over again. Uh, all right, so now since we're doing a Maclaurin, let's figure out what's f of 0 and f prime of 0 and so forth. And it will get this pattern, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 0, negative 1. That's the pattern over and over again. We're going to use this line right here and use the same thing to plug in the stuff that we need to come up with the Maclaurin series for sine x. So we'll write out that sine x is going to equal, and then we start plugging stuff in. So let me have that just appear here. So you get this thing where every other term is going to be end up being a 0, because every one of these, every other one of those is 0. Oh, wait, sorry. Some of you caught that. I made an error. Let me fix that right there. I put hex cubed, because I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. And it should be 3 factorial. OK, there. Now let's go on and clean this up a bit and write down the next line. All right, so now we have this pattern. 
Notice how the exponents are all odds, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, so forth. And so then the denominators would also be the odds, 1 factorial, 3 factorial, 5 factorial. Okay, so that's going to help you with the memorization. The sign is going to be all the odds. Now when we get to this last part, this is the part that's going to be a little bit harder to memorize, that very last term, the nth term. It's this crazy thing. So it's alternating. Every other term is positive and negative, positive, negative. And then we're going to be starting at 2n and then plus 1 to get this 1, 3, 5, 7. And then it's the same thing. 1, 3, 5, 7 will be 2n plus 1 on bottom factorial. All right, then our last step is we, uh, we write out what is the summation. So the summation notation is just going to go from 0 to infinity of this nth term. So then we just write that again. And there we go. So what are the things you're going to be memorizing? You're going to be memorizing this step right here as well as this step. Okay, so again, we're, I'm going to show you the chart. So here we go. Let's put this all in the chart. Instead of us figuring out all of them, so I just showed you how we figure out e to the x and sine to the x. We're not going to work out cosine and the 1 over 1 plus x. It's the same way you do it. Uh, so here is the chart that you're going to fill out. So e to the x we did. And then here's the series notation, interval of convergence. If we did the ratio test, we could figure out all these interval of convergences. And then sine x we just did. So what I would say is notice that sine and cosine are very similar. The difference is, what I try to remember is that it works for me, and that is that the odds and evens, if you think of the word odd and even, it's alphabetical, and cosine and sine are also alphabetical. So it's cosine and sine, if you put them alphabetically, then it helps you remember that cosine is with the evens. See, two, four, six. Uh, sine is with the odds alphabetically. One, three, five, seven. Okay, kind of dumb, but it works for me to help me remember these. Uh, and then this series notation you also want to have memorized. And then the one over one plus x, this is kind of a cool one. It alternates every other one, and then it just increases x. So that's why it's negative one to the n for alternating, and x to the n. So pause, get, oh, but the interval of convergence is only from negative one to one. So this one only works to tell us that what this equals from this point. So pause the video, get this written down real quick. So let me remind you what this does. This tells us that if we take a series, this is equivalent to e to the x. This series right here, this is equivalent to sine of x. It doesn't work for every function, but it works for a lot of functions, especially some of the common ones. And so these are the ones we're going to memorize that it works for. Okay, so before I jump into an example, let me show you one interesting thing, and that is that this 1 over 1 minus x, which is really close to this last one, 1 over 1 plus x, this is actually a geometric series, which is kind of interesting. Do you remember when we did this back in the second lesson of unit 10? We had a geometric series, and this would equal a to the r to the n equals this, whatever k is, this thing. Okay, yeah, that's kind of confusing. Let me, let me uh, simplify this down a little bit. A lot of times n just equals 0. Well, if n equals 0, then r to the 0 is 1. That's gone. And so you just have this thing. In fact, most te textbooks and most teachers will just teach this. The only reason I teach it this way is because then it works in case n does not equal 0. And then you can still use this for your geometric formula. All right, so now notice this is extremely similar to this, 1 over 1 minus x. So what's the difference here? Well, we've got uh, 1 and a instead. So what we're going to say is that a equals 1. And instead of an x, we're, we're going to, or instead of an r, we're going to say x. So r is going to equal x. So if we do that, then this can be represented. We can say that 1 over 1 minus x is the same thing as the summation of, and then we write this up. We're going to say n equals 0 to infinity. The a is a 1, so I don't have to write that. My r is an x, so I'm going to say x to the n. That's what this 1 over 1 minus x equals. Or in other words, it is equivalent to 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed, and that's it. It's that easy of a pattern. Okay, kind of a cool thing that uh, fits in with Maclaurin series, but also that it's this thing actually represents a geometric series. All right, let's do some examples with this. We just got two examples here, so just pay attention real carefully because this is how you're going to do the practice problems. Uh, so what every time you have one of these, this is how you're going to help. This is going to help you memorize it. You look at what is kind of the parent function of these four. So we're working with one of these four things. Obviously, for this problem, it is sine x. So we're going to write down what is sine x equivalent to. And if you write this out, it'll help you to memorize it. So remember, sine 
and cosine. Sine comes after cosine, so that's going to be the ones with odd. So you got to go odd, 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 odd. So we're going to write it down again. So what we're doing with this, in order to get sine of x squared, all you have to do is every time an x shows up, so each of these, you're going to, instead of x, you're going to put whatever this is, an x squared in this case. So what we can say is that a sine of x squared is going to equal this exact same thing, but instead of an x, it's x squared. So this is x squared minus x squared raised to the third over three factorial. So this would become x to the sixth if we simplified it. And then plus x squared raised to the fifth over five factorial. And again, this x squared to the fifth, that would become x to the tenth. And then minus x squared to the seventh over seven factorial, that becomes x to the 14th. And we just keep continuing that pattern over and over and over again. Now, what we needed to figure out as well is if we had, well, let me say this. Many times the problems will just say, what are the first three terms? And so you just write this one, this one, this one, and you're done. Or maybe the first four terms. So one, two, three, four, and then you're finished. But you also might have to figure out the summation notation part, this part right here. So how does this change? Okay, so I've taken this thing, this is the, this is sine x, the summation notation for sine x, and uh, let's change it. What are we doing? The x is going to become an x squared, so that x. So what does that mean? We're now going to have, from n equals 0 to infinity, I'm so sloppy with these summation notations, uh, negative 1 to the nth power, and now this is x squared to the 2n plus 1 all over 2n plus 1 factorial. And they might simplify this. So if it was a multiple choice, you might then have to even go one more step and it comes out and looks like this because power to a power you multiply. So it's 2 times 2n, 2 times, oh, what's supposed to be 1? Whoops, right there. Okay, fix it. There we go. 4n plus 2. So uh, 2 distributes because it's power raised to a power and you multiply. All right, so that is this one. So this would be the series written out, expanded, and then this would be the, the summation notation here for the series. All right, one more problem, and then we're finished with this. So e to the x. e to the x, let's start off. This is how you want to do this, and I would do this on your practice problems too. Write out what the original one is before it's been manipulated and modified. So our e to the x. You remember what that is? Can you remember without looking? That's 1 plus x plus x squared. So it's always just over the exponent factorial. 3, 3 factorial. 4, 4 factorial. Until you get this thing, long thing here. All right, now what do we do next? What is happening is we've got x squared times e to the x. So you've got this entire series here that's just getting multiplied by x squared. So all we have to do is you take this th whole thing and you're going to multiply it by x squared. So what we say is that x squared times e to the x is going to equal, and now each one of these terms, multiply it by x squared. So that's x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth but now the bottom doesn't change, so it's two, still 2 factorial. Oh, you can just say 2. Plus x to the 5th power, because we're just adding exponents. 3 factorial. And I don't know why, as I'm writing, it's getting bigger. You notice that? It's like getting bigger as I go to the right. Sorry. Dot, 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 until we get to the last term. And how do we do this? So you have to think, what's x squared times x to the nth? You add exponents. So it's just n plus 2 inside the exponent all over n factorial. And that helps us out quite a bit because if you've got that nth term, then when you jump to the uh, summation notation, you just go from zero to infinity. That was an awful infinity. And then that is the nth term. So we're summing up all of the terms that are from n zero to infinity of this thing. All right, and then that would be your, an well, both of these are your answer. I shouldn't box that because it's both of these, depending on what the problem asks for. It might ask for like the first three terms. So you just do this one, this one, and this one, and that would be your answer. Or it might ask for you to figure out the summation notation. Just kind of depends on the problem. Okay, that's everything. So rock that mastery check, and I'll see you back in the next lesson, which is our last lesson of the year. All right, see ya, Mr. Bean signing off.